for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks. Hold the cross high because we're Catholics. Fight the good fight with the truth. Stand tall with the truth. I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm in love with the truth. Love God. Save souls. Slay error. Go stronger. Reporting for duty, sir. And then I'm reporting for duty, sir, too. And this is going to be an amazing show because we have a special guest from the Marion Helpers, Father Chris Ellert. He is a author of a book on suicide and how divine mercy is intervening in people's lives. And he has an idea regarding the coronavirus that you can't miss. It's coming up. But, Jesse, we also have something on the uh, bells, the spiritual... The surprising power of church bells, and here at the Sacred Heart Chapel here on our campus, we're building a church steeple. We just purchased a church bell that was built in 1856, somewhere in there uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio. We purchased it, and we're putting it up on a bell tower, and we're going to ring that bell at noon. We're going to ring the bell at 6 p.m. and all between because we want people to know that God is still with us. So that's our show today, so you don't want to miss that. Jess, you had suggested that rather than reading from the gospel, and I think you're spot on, that we read from the first reading of today's Mass. And Jesse, it's from Exodus, but I want to remind people, my prayer, my prayer is that all of us will have a greater and deeper love for the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist when this is all over, because so many of us are being deprived of being able to receive Holy Communion on the weekends and during the, the, the weekdays, that this, that we talked about it yesterday with Cardinal Ratzinger, this little time that we're away from the Blessed Sacrament. Build your strength. Use these spiritual communion prayers that we have on our website because we want to come back and have a greater love for Jesus. And we should actually lead people to spiritual communion just to start the show. Go for it, Jess. In name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the most blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, mm. and I desire to possess thee within my soul. Since I am unable not to receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace thee as being already there, and I unite myself wholly and entirely to thee. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to also pray Psalm 91. Yep. And it's Saint a prayer Pat- yep. against pestilence and plagues. And it's, a, it's also an exorcism prayer against the diabolical. So pray that every day. Today's first reading at Holy Mass mm-hmm. that nobody was able to attend, most people, is from Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 to 14. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I think it actually speaks about our present situation. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt. For they have become depraved. What does that mean, depraved? You'll see what it, what it means. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is our God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then that my wrath may blaze against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. So what's God uh, upset about? Idolatry, worshiping false gods. And it even goes deeper. When you read the Exodus account in in, uh, chapter 32, when you read it, they were dancing around the calf, but the Hebrew word indicates that they were all naked and having an orgy. Okay, That's what the Hebrew word says. It isn't is not it's not translated as such in English. It's it's uh it's uh more generalized, but the Hebrew is very clear what they were doing. And then it says, But Moses implored the Lord. So Moses is a, a covenant mediator here. And who's the perfect perfect covenant mediator now? Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the new Moses. So it says, But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze upon Blaze, blaze up against your own people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with so strong a hand. Notice right there. God punishes sin. It's very clear. Simple. Anybody who denies that doesn't read the Bible. They must, they must be reading, I don't know, Ge- National Geographic or something, but huh. they're not reading God's word. Right. God has wrath. What does that mean? 
Wrath means anger. And what does God do when you offend him? In other words, there comes such a point, St. Louis de Mont, uh, no, uh, St. Uh, Marie Alphonsus de Liguori, right. doctor of the church, he says that there comes a point in a person's life where they keep offending God so much over and over again with the same sin that they don't repent of or they make bad they, they make imperfect you know contritions they're just like kind of like going through the motions where God says okay I'm done with you I'm done you're stuck on that sin guess what you're going to die in, in in that sin in obstinate stubbornness and there comes a point in time where God says St. Alphonse Liguori says God says I'm done I'm not going to forgive that no more uh this is like You've done this over and over and over, and you will not repent. You will not have contrition. You will not have a metanoia. Let's continue. It says, Why should the the Egyptians say, with evil intent, he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath lie down. Relent in punishing your people. So here Moses is interceding for the people, telling God, please don't don't, uh, exercise your just wrath on them. And then it says here, let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promise I will give to your descendants as their perpetual heritage. What is Moses doing here? There's a, there's a Jewish doctrine. It's called the merits of the fathers. And what that means is the Jews... They appeal to God and they say, God, look at the holy saints. Of course, Old Testament. Look at the holy saints and their lives. Remember them. Don't do not. Please forgive your people right now. Remember them. That's called. It's a a Jewish doctrine that most Catholics don't realize. That's why you want to get my free apologetics. I got stuff in my free apologetics book that no apologist has. It's on my website. Uh, jesseromero.com it's a free apologetics book i've been working on it 15 years i don't want to publish it and i've got gold like this that nobody has <laughs> i mean nobody okay what so what what's the merits of the fathers it's the same thing like the communion of the saints where do we get the communion of the saints from as catholics from the jews called the merits of the fathers the jews would ask god don't chastise us look at abraham isaac and jacob and that's what we do in the communion of the saints we go to the saints who are perfectly justified and sanctified before God, and we say, God, listen to them. They're holy and righteous. This is what's happening right now. Moses is appealing to a doct- a Jewish doctrine called the merits of the fathers, which is parallel to the communion of saints. And then it ends like this. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Wow. So notice. Though, though it looks like the train is going to go off the edge of the cliff, it's, it's not that God changes his mind. It's not like God, like, he's fickle, like, oh, okay, no. God already knows everything before it even happens. But God is waiting for us to repent. If you repent, just like Nineveh, uh, what will happen? God will stay his, his wrath. God will hold back his chastisement. That's what happened here. Now, God already knew the way it was all going to turn out. But Moses is begging God, please don't punish them. Look at the Jewish saints in heaven. Please, Lord, don't punish uh, us for our idolatry. And so God stayed his wrath because he saw that there was enough people like Moses and others that were showing true, true repentance and contrition. Remember, God said that he would not destroy a certain city if he only found 50 righteous people. Let's pray that there are 50 righteous people in the Catholic Church right now so that God will spare us of this coronavirus. Terror. Absolutely. I want to give some good news. Uh, I mentioned a couple of days ago that uh, Portugal was encouraging their country and other countries to join in on a ceremony to consecrate the world and the, each country to the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Well, the update is now there's 25, 24 new countries that are going to do that, more the merrier, because we need that right now. As a matter of fact, Jesse, what we need right now is strong faith to, to bring us through this, and also devotion to divine mercy. And that's why, 
at the end of the break, we're, uh, we're going to bring on Father Chris from the Marian Helpers to talk about a new initiative and also later in the show to talk about the bells. Jess, you have a couple things you wanted to mention before the break. The only thing I want to say is that as Catholics, remember, uh, honor your father and your mother, the Pope, oh, bishops, priests. However, let's also let's realize that if your mom and dad say something that's fundamentally wrong, you can disagree with them. And so, again, if uh, Pope Benedict has said that you can even disagree, for example, with his holiness on the issues of war, the death penalty and other things, because these are not issues that are part of the perennial teachings of the church. They're not de fide. And one of the things that uh, I, I would, again, take issue, Pope Francis, with all due respect, he said that the coronavirus pandemic he says it's this is nature throwing a tantrum. Mm. And he's quoting an ex priest who's been laicized, who's uh he's basically the engineer behind the Amazon Synod claims he's the one that's saying that the coronavirus is Mother Earth's revenge because we don't recycle and all those things. And so I just disagree. As a that's Catholic, Bible, I just disagree yeah. because they're making statements based on science. We don't know that. Uh that's not that has nothing to do with faith and morals. I believe according to what the Bible says that that chastisement is the punishment from God for sin, and uh, and the exegesis of some of the great saints like Saint Gregory the Great, Saint Bernardine of Siena, uh, Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint Bridget of Sweden, Saint Vincent Ferrer, Saint Louis de Montfort, uh, Saint uh, 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 they're all there. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, the, the fact of the matter is, oh, Saint Pius the Tenth, the exegesis of the saints is that God rewards the good, but He chastises the wicked. And how does he do it? He'll do it with war, pestilences, and, and sicknesses. And uh, that's the tradition of the church. Not what this uh, modernist ex-Jesuit uh, from uh, uh, from Brazil. South America, uh, this laicized priest, Mr. Boff, says. We'll be Mr. back with, with Father Chris to talk about a solution to the coronavirus. We'll be right back. Sirach 1124 says, Do not say, I am self-sufficient. What harm can come to me now? According to St. Catherine of Siena, presumption is like vermin burrowing at the root of the tree of our soul. If we do not uproot it with great care and humility, it will eventually destroy the soul. May God keep us from all presumption of mind and heart and realize that we depend on Him for everything. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions. But what's important is that a baby is a baby, inside and out of the womb. Not just after birth, but nine months before, at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. 
Red PG, praise God. We got Father Chris Allery here. Uh, he, Father Chris is uh, one of my, he's one of the most inspirational Catholic priests right now. You know, I'm, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Lay people, we look to priests to get inspired. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kid you. Of course. And and the fact is, I, I'm glad that uh, I was born for such a time as this, where I could have a priest like him, like Father Calloway, some others of that caliber that are just, I mean, they're just bright lights in a dark world. Father Chris, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Oh, it's great to see both of you guys. You're two of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Father Chris. You, I got you got my attention. You had an article that said "seal the doorposts," and I thought, "What? What's this all about?" Wow! And so, what did I do? I get on the phone and I call you and say, "Hey, would you share your story? Share the divine mercy message? We need hope in the church right now." So, Father, tell us a little bit about. First of all, I want to ask for those who don't know who you are, give us a little background about your own walk into the Lord. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm uh, uh, blessed enough to be a part of the Mary. Here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, awesome. Massachusetts, awesome. and we are the right now the epicenter of Divine Mercy in the world. Uh, all the printing, uh, the Diary of Saint Faustina, the image you see behind me, mm-hmm. which is well known, the Divine Mercy image that all comes right from here through the graces given to Saint Faustina. And uh, you mentioned some of our other priests, like Father Mike Gately, sure, Father Don that. Calloway. Sure. Um, it's an honor to be part of this movement. And I tell you, as Jesus told St. Faustina, mankind's last hope of salvation is divine mercy. Yeah. And John Paul made it clear, there's nothing the world needs today more than divine mercy. Amen to that. Wow. Well, Father, so let's get, let's, Jesse, this article. Yeah, Father, I, I, I heard one of your homilies you're talking about. We got to turn to the real corona. I, I know what that word is because I'm Hispanic. Ah. <laughs> corona means crown. Exactly. And in Spanish, it's very interesting. In Spanish, <laughs> he showed hear, it to us. You don't hear that. Yeah, there you go. You don't hear that much in English, but in Spanish, can you see? The yeah. cat, can yeah. you see this? Corona yeah. of mercy. Oh, okay. We can. We can. That. Yeah. Tell us how that came about. Corona you guys, of mercy. This, yeah. You have a good this, story, Father, about how that this, came to your this, community. Go ahead. This this is amazing. Yeah. Um, it's a great story. We received a uh, letter yeah. from a woman, one of our Marian helpers, and she sent us this prayer card from 1944. <laughs> we didn't even have it in our archives. I bet. And this prayer card grabbed my attention because, as you can see by the title, it says Corona of Mercy. Yes. And that actually was the title of this prayer card. Now, what is fascinating is what Jesse just said. If you know the languages, you know that, well, let's go to the Latin. Corona means crown, right? Yes. And so um, the aspect of what I did a homily on is this. Following along your guys' points made earlier, um, God is God. And, you know, I would like to come up, I don't want to get on a tangent, but Jesse, I think you hit the nail on the head that misconception about Mother Nature, you know, the concept that we're missing here, which you started to hit on, is sin is a disharmony to God's universe. Amen. And so when we sin, we think in this world today, we only affect ourselves. My sin's private. Don't bother me. Um, I'm not affecting you. I'm not hurting you. Leave me alone to do what I want to do behind my closed doors. No. No. We are part of the body of Christ, and everything you do, thank you guys, <laughs> affects me, and everything I do affects you. Amen. Now, how is that? It's because we're part of the body of Christ, and when I sin, I put poison into God's creation Yep. and a disharmony into God's universe. Now— when we sin, that poison or that, that disharmony into God's universe causes things like this virus. God, in his ordained will, doesn't want a child to die of the coronavirus. But in his permissive will, he allows it. Yep. Why? Because, first of all, it is an opportunity for us to realize that without God, we have nothing. Amen. Without him, we have nothing. Also, he'll want to bring a greater good out of it. And I want to show that greater good back to this corona of mercy. What, yep. what possible greater good could come out of this situation? 
Well, a couple things, believe it or not. First of all, since Christ and we celebrate the feast, Jesus, King of the universe, only Christ wears the crown. Only he is the true king. And I think what our Lord is allowing us to see in this time of unprecedented shutdown and lockdown is that all the other things we've made our gods with a small g mm -hmm. have disintegrated before us. Let's look at it. Money. I mean, the stock market is as volatile as a Chinese firecracker. <laughs> Amen. Um, no, no pun intended with the Chinese <laughs> fire. Right? I understand. Um, so, so the stock market, it goes up and down like a yo-yo. It, it is so volatile. You could lose half your savings tomorrow. Right. And, and, and so that's not our God. Um, what about sports? I'm the first one to raise my hand. <laughs> I, I love college football. I love NHL hockey. I'm the first guy to admit that, but you know what? Sports has become a God. On Sunday, I know so many people who don't even go to mass because they got to get to tailgating by 8 a.m. in the in the parking lot. Um, I'm I'm guilty. I'm a sports fan. I I and you know what? It's really made me reflect. Yes. Um, but that has been shut down. Okay. Now, what about the God of what so many people have made in bars and alcohol and entertainment? Now, bars are shut. Movie theaters are shut down. What is God doing? I think the greater good he's allowing to come out of this is time of reflection for our families with people that we don't even spend time with anymore mm -hmm. because we're too busy with all these other gods with a small g. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden they're gone. Now, God's not taking them permanently, but he's allowing us to see temporarily that these aren't our gods. The corona, only the true crown, is worn by Jesus Christ, the true king. And so corona also means um, like a head, uh, like a head, uh, um, head garment. And the most important thing about this is if you look in the understanding of it, this is how the corona is shaped. I think it's a wake up call for God showing us that these aren't the true gods of our world. He is the true king not these other small g gods. And well, let so me jump, let me one of the call, one of the persons who's listening to the show right now just sent me this. It's just right in line with what you're saying. In fact, he has the coronavirus right now. He's sitting at home. Yep. He says in in just 3 short months, just like what you're saying, Father, God did with the plagues of Egypt, uh God has taken everything we worship away. God said, "You want to worship athletes? I'll shut down yep. your stadiums." You yep. want to worship musicians? I'll shut down the civic yep. centers. You want yep. to worship actors? I'll shut down theaters. You want yep. to worship money? I'll shut down the economy and collapse the yep. stock market. You don't yep. want to go to church and worship me? I'll make it where you can't go to church. Wow. And this man has uh, the coronavirus at home with right his now. wife right now. Yeah. And so this is the wake up call. I think God wants to always bring a greater good. Amen. And the greater good out of this is seeing who truly is our God. So the Corona, mm -hmm. the Corona of mercy, how ironic that this is the coronavirus, <laughs> is because it's showing us these things aren't the king. Christ is king. Amen. And, and, and so this is what we are trying to God is trying to show us, but how many people are are getting this message? You know, Jesus or uh, God said the final battle. Uh, Saint Lu or um, Sister Lucy said the final battle between God and Satan will be over marriage and the family. If this is true, and guys, I'll tell you, Jesus told Saint Faustina eighty nine years ago that she would prepare, help prepare the world for his final coming. Okay, mm -hmm. that was eighty nine years ago. So if 89 years ago, Jesus said, St. Faustina, you're going to help prepare the world for my final coming. We could be, I don't know, nobody knows, right? But you know what? If this is true, yeah. what Sister Lucy said, that God will, the final battle between marriage and the family, God's giving us the time now to spend with our families. Don't miss this chance. Amen. Father, well that makes said. Sense. Well said. Father, the, the divine mercy is an eschatological prayer, like you said. It's And a lot of people don't, it just goes over their head. I tell people, yeah. guys, this prayer wasn't given to us so we could just have something, another devotion to add to our 
Catholic war bag. Or, or so God can keep us now busy at 3 o'clock with something else. No. This was given to us surgically by God because we walked away from the bloodiest century known to mankind, the 20th century, and God knows that the world is so wicked right now, like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, and God needs to inject the world with this reminder uh, of, of Mary's Magnificat, uh, that, that God is merciful. God is merciful to the nations. In fact, Mary was the first person to preach mercy in the New Testament. And the divine mercy is a preparation for the second coming of Christ. When that happens, question mark, we don't know. But boy, oh boy, is this a time to prepare right now, especially when everybody's on semi-lockdown. When we come back, Father Chris, I'm going to have you give us the solution to your article, Seal the Doorpost. We're kind of like, what the heck is all that about? But that's my teaser. When we come back, Father Chris Ellert from the Marian Helpers is going to explain why devotion, devotion, why we have a love for divine mercy. And what is true divine mercy here we're talking about? Father and and Jesse just eloquently laid out the problem. And again, problem solution. You know what the problem and solution has been for since day one? It's always Jesus Christ. And that's our job to help you get to heaven. That's why we invited Father Chris on to help you have trust in Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. When we come back, we're going to talk about the solution. And also later in the show, we're going to talk about the surprising spiritual power of church bells because what we're doing here at the Sacred Heart Chapel at our campus is we're building a tower to put a bell in that was built in 1856, and we're going to ring that bell. Why? Because we want people to have hope in God. And right now, the world is acting like God doesn't exist. But here, we're going to give a solution that the entire world can embrace, and we're not going to stop preaching that until our last breath. We've got Father Chris from the Marian Helpers. I want to encourage people to go to their website, the divinemercy.org website. Get whatever you can from their website. Support these men. They're good men who are in love with Jesus and his bride, the church. Jesse, before yeah. Father gives yeah. us, go ahead. Go ahead also, Jesse. read the articles that we have on, on the show page. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, you, we need to read them. One, one article that says, Pope Francis, coronavirus pandemic is nature throwing a tantrum. Read that, yeah. okay? The other one is, Lay aside priests who helped engineer Amazon Synod claims coronavirus is Mother Earth's revenge. Disagree, disagree. That's not consistent with church teaching. But read Robert De Matei, the great Italian historian. Wow. Wow. He says, is the coronavirus a divine punishment? It's powerful. He quotes the Bible and the doctors and saints of the church. That's the Catholic response. This is a divine punishment, either God's direct will or permissive, permissive. will. Yeah. But nothing happens without the hand of God. We come back, Father Chris Ellard from the Marian Helpers is going to give us his solution called the seal on the doorpost. What's he talking about? I'll tell you. It has something to do with divine mercy. We'll be right back. Christ's message of love, mercy, and compassion is for all of humanity. The Last Days, The Passion and Death of Jesus the Christ is a live passion play being performed in Los Angeles and is an opportunity to get up close and personal to Jesus Christ during this season of Lent. Hi, I'm Jonathan Rumi, and I play Jesus Christ, and I'd like to invite you to join us on April 4th, 5th, and Good Friday, April 10th, at Emanuel Presbyterian Church in Koreatown for this special presentation. If you're not able to attend the play in person, please consider supporting the ministry by making a donation to help us ensure Christ's message is brought to the world through the arts. For more information, again, go to www.thelastdayspassionplay.com and find, follow, and share us on social media, on Instagram, at The Last Days of Jesus, and on Facebook, at the last days of Jesus Passion Play. Thank you so much, and God bless.
This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. The only corona that we we want to spread is the corona of divine mercy. That's C.S. Lewis calls the gospel of Jesus Christ a good infection. That's the infection we want to spread, the corona of God's divine mercy. Father Chris, <laughs> inspire us. Tell us about that seal of the doorpost. What what inspired you to, to do this little blog, Father? Well, you're not going to believe it. Tell, um, me. Tell me. We we have a lot of understanding of the image of divine mercy through the Diary of St. Faustina, correct? Yep. That's right. And that's almost where our exclusive, um, exclusive knowledge comes from. But I'm going to share something with you. You guys are the first place I've announced this publicly. Right. I was sitting down talking with the world's foremost experts on divine mercy, Father Seraphim Mekalenko and Father Kazmir. Father Seraphim is the one who smuggled the diary out of communist Poland and got it here to the United States. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it, it just, on microfilm, actually, Father Jorzembowski was the one who got originally the diary. But Father Seraphim was the um, one who actually got the first image here in the Western Hemisphere at St. Stan's in um, North Adams, Massachusetts. But anyway, we are talking, we were going through some untranslated writings of Blessed Michael Sapochko, and he was the confessor of St. Faustina. This just happened, and we were reading through these untranslated in the original Polish, and we found two paragraphs of what he wrote that Jesus said about the image of divine mercy, and it's not in the diary. Wow. And it's fascinating. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. When chastisements for sins, Jesse, that goes with what you were saying. When chastisements for sins come upon the world and your own country will experience utter degradation, the only refuge will be trust in my mercy. Mm. I will protect the cities and homes in which the divine mercy image is found. Mm. I will protect the persons who will venerate this image. The only refuge will be trust in my mercy. Now, remember, these are the words of Jesus to St. Faustina as she revealed to her confessor. Now, listen to the next paragraph. Let everyone procure for their homes this image. Because there will yet come trials, and those homes and entire families and everyone individually who will hold this image of mercy in deep reverence, I will preserve from every sort of misfortune. The time will come when all those who do so will give witness to the miraculous efficacy and to the special protection of mercy flowing from this image. Wow, sign now, me up. Guys, what paragraph is that? Father, what paragraph th- is that? It's, it's, it's not in the diary. This okay. is some writings of Blessed Michael Sapochko, which was the confessor of St. Faustina. Wow. That's what makes this so critical, because yeah. this has never been translated into English. Wow. And so you're hearing it first on your show. Yeah, sign us up. And so, Father, so let, let me let me uh, bring it down to the blue collar language. Anybody who has the de- the, the image divine mercy our- image in their house that's obviously blessed by a Catholic priest yeah. is afforded some protection. type of protection, protection. from yes. uh, 
you know, from from misfortune, and that's a, that's a big word. It covers could, a lot. That could that could cover famines, wars, raids, plagues, yes. pestilence. That's that's what it said, right? Yeah. And now, conf- this we we want to be careful. I'm not trying to claim that if you put this image on your door, you may not still get the virus. Okay, that may happen. What the promise is is that the Lord will protect you. We just, Jesse, you nailed it. We just don't know how. He may allow you to still get the virus, but he may protect you spiritually. He may still allow you to get sick, but he will protect you eternal salvation. These are the important words that are given in this passage to Saint, uh, from St. Saint Faustina to her confessor. And I said, um, you know, and this is why I'm so glad Terry picked up on this, because when I was working with Father Seraphim translating this, I said, we got to announce this to the world. Amen. I mean, we got to get people hanging this image. So the seal your doorposts goes back and we created a hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> Um, seal the doorposts, and it goes back to the passing of the angel of death on the doors of those who mark the blood of the lamb. And so now Christ is the true blood of the lamb. And where does the blood come? From his heart. And that heart is the image of divine mercy. From the heart comes the blood and the water. So when you hang that image of the true lamb on your door, when the angel of death comes by, now again, it may not mean you don't get the virus, but it could be spiritual death. It could be that 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 spiritual death that's coming is going to be protect. You're going to be protected. Now, this doesn't mean it's a magic wand. It's not a rabbit's foot. Um, it's important. You guys are right. The mercy of God is not a free ticket to sin. Exactly. The mercy of God comes with the understanding that you have a rectification of the will and that you are going to repent and say, Lord, all right, I messed up here. I mean, I've messed up worse than anybody in my past life, but God's mercy gives me another chance. But with it has to come a, a contrite heart and a rectification of the will to do better. Wow. Father, people to get the Divine Mercy images, you have a, uh, if I just send people to your website, thedivinemercy.org, can they get all that from the website? Absolutely. We're, we're promoting it. Thank you. You can get it for free yep. on thedivinemercy.org slash Divine Mercy image. Got it. And you can oh, mi- download it for free. Awesome. Get it Get it on your doors. The protection our Lord offers is nothing short of amazing. Amen. Amen. Father, uh, I, I also know uh, one or two exorcists that have told me that very effectively, when they do a session over an energumen, somebody who's who's uh, been deemed as possessed, They'll put the divine mercy right in front of the energumen as they sit them down and start the session. And they've told me that's one of the most powerful images to drive away an evil spirit that they've ever used in the Catholic Church, the divine mercy image. Some exorcists have told me that they just put an energumen to sit there and meditate on the divine mercy for a few hours, and the demon will be driven out just by the image themselves without any prayers. So... There's a very powerful anointing that's coming yeah. from this prayer. And and the reason that is, is because of what's on the image. If you can see behind we, we me as I, point, as I point up to the image. Yes. Um, here's the reason why that's true, Jesse, why the exorcists know this. Satan only has two tools, and that's sin, and the result of sin is death. So when we sin, we deserve to die. Paul says the, the wage of sin is death. And that's what many are experiencing right now. And in fact, I just gave the apostolic pardon yesterday to wow. a dying wow. man. Wow. And it says, do you know this, Jesse, in the right? Do you know that it says that if you give the apostolic pardon, part of what the penitent should do is accept the fact that some of what they're going through, the suffering is punishment for their sins. Wow. Wow. It says wow. it says that in the apostolic blessing, I was shocked. I'm glad it's I was, there. I was shocked. Yeah. And so anyway, back to the image. Satan's only two tools are sin, and the result of sin is death. Okay, here's what's awesome. What wipes away sin? Well, the first the blood of Jesus. Repent. The cleansing water. Well, ba- ba- and we're going to get to that. Blood. But the cleansing waters of baptism and confession. You got it. So 
the first ray is, is the cleansing waters of baptism and confession. They wipe away sin. That's Satan's first tool. Now, to what Jesse was saying, the precious blood. What is Satan's other tool? Death. Yes. What wipes out death to the Jews? Blood of Jesus. Or, let, me, let me back up. What, what, what wipes out death? Yes. Life. Life. And what is life to the Jews? Blood. 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 Leviticus 17. Yes. Or 19. So, yeah. so this image has everything. You've got, you've got uh, Jesus obliterating Satan's only two tools in this one image. His sin is wiped out, not his Jesus, but Satan's sin is wiped out by the cleansing waters of baptism and confession. And the result of sin, which is death, is wiped out by life. And what is life to the Jews? Blood. And this is why we have the precious blood also in this image. Wow. Well, that makes sense to me. Now I know why it's so powerful against somebody who's uh, diabolically afflicted. You just gave the theology behind it, and it makes perfect sense. Terry? Now, Father... Uh Chris, you know, when you were just was explaining more of the divine mercy image, can you share a little bit more with that image behind you? Those who are on YouTube or Facebook can see it. But when you get your image, explain a little bit more of the symbolism of the image. Absolutely. Now, the, the Holy Father once said the most powerful image of Christianity are the images that best capture the Paschal mystery. This entire Paschal mystery is captured in this image. Mm -hmm. Let's let's walk through it real Good. quick. Let's do it. The, the Paschal mystery, when did it begin? It began in the upper room when Jesus instituted the priesthood. Now, how is Jesus dressed in this image? He's dressed as the high priest. Look at he's wearing like we have an alb. Yes. A Catholic priest alb. Yep. Jesus is dressed as the new high priest. What did he institute? The mass. As Jesse just said, and you pointed out, Terry, that is the blood. That precious blood. So we have the upper room. The first part of the Paschal mystery, the Last Supper, is in this image. Now, what happened next? Good Friday, the crucifixion. In this image, the hands and feet of Christ bear the wounds of crucifixion. So Good Friday is in that image. What happened next? Easter Sunday. In this image, as seen by the halo around Christ's head, he is resurrected. He is in his glorified state. So this image captures the, the, the resurrection of Easter Sunday. Now, what happened 40 days after the resurrection? The coming of, uh, of, of um, uh, excuse me, the ascension of Christ to the Father. How is that captured in this image? Ah, this is interesting. It said in Scripture, before Jesus ascended to the Father, he blessed all those present. Mm. The traditional form of Jewish bless, blessing is the hand raised at shoulder height, and Jesus is bestowing that blessing in this image to those who go before it. Remember, we're not worshiping the image. We're, we're worshiping what it represents. Amen. That's Exodus. And Christ oh. is bestowing a blessing. Father Chris, hang on. When we come back, we want to keep you. This is fascinating. It's giving us great hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll be back with more on the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Help the Helpless, a Minnesota St. Paul nonprofit organization chaired by Father of Tear and volunteers, is humbly asking you for your kind support to help the poor and the handicapped children in India and Ecuador. Through financial support from the help of the helpless benefactors, the children are provided with clothing, food, education, shelter, and the teachings of the Catholic Church. The mission is to help children thrive and become self-sufficient young adults leading productive lives. We also provide aid to poor families in Ecuador with food baskets, medicines, medical assistance, and help with funeral needs for the deceased. The work in India is done by Father Antonio's organization, St. Mary's. In Ecuador, the work is being done by the Servant Sisters of the Home of Mother. You can call us at 877-762-8857. To learn more, please visit our website, www.helpthehelpless.org. God bless you. Hebrews 11.3 says, 
By faith, we come to understand. According to St. Augustine, understanding is the reward of faith. Therefore, seek not to understand that you may believe, but believe that you may understand. May God grant us a strong living faith in Him and His divine plan of salvation and help us to believe so that we may understand. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. This is Dr. Scott Hahn, and you are listening to The Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Here's Terry and Jesse. <laughs> but, I be, love be, it. Praise God. Father you know, Chris, uh, Terry, I think it would be good for Father to go over again. Absolutely. Uh, what he just what said. He just said. It's powerful. I mean, powerful. The whole last the whole segment, last Father, segment, Father, go through the Paschal mystery in, in light of the, the, the picture. Yeah. Because I'm getting... People, my phone is Me going too. crazy. Yeah, they going want crazy. to hear what you said again. Yeah. And then go go through what you said again on the two bullets of the devil and the way the water and the blood uh, 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 just basically uh, obfuscate yeah. or obliterate the two bullets of the devil. Go ahead. Father, you're on. Go. Sure. First of all, thank you. I saw you caught me eating my cookie at the break there. That's all right. <laughs> you're human. You're human. Okay. So this image, guys, is so critically important. Yeah. That our, our Lord told us that the soul that venerates this image, this is shocking, yeah. will not perish. That's, that's a promise. Good. That's a promise from Christ to St. Faustina, and that is in the diary. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. Jesse pointed out that the exorcists have said if they place this image in a situation where there's an exorcism, that the demons will flee in terror. Mm -hmm. And... This is, I know you have a segment coming up on church bells, and actually, you know, the history of the church bell goes back to warning of demons, which hopefully right. we'll get to yeah, I hope in so. a little bit. <laughs> but here's the thing. The reason why the demons are so afraid of this image is because they absolutely dis deplore, yeah. they're disgusted with God's mercy, because they cannot understand how God would be so merciful to a slimy creature like us. Well, the point is, we have to be careful. Mercy is not a free ticket to sin. Right. It is. It is. is a. It's a way to get back up after we fall. Amen. If we've been repentant. Yep. Now, what is it about this image behind me that gives you these tools? All right. Satan only has two tools in his toolbox, and that is sin. He can coax us into sin, not because he has access to our free will. He can tempt us, and whether or not we give in. So Satan's first tool is sin. Now, Paul tells us in Scripture that the wage of sin is death. So when we sin, this is why Jesus died on the cross. Man. People always ask. I ask my kids all the time, even adults. Guys, why did Jesus die on the cross? And they say, well, he loves us. Yeah, but <laughs> he could have loved you from heaven. Exactly. People say, well, to forgive our sins. Yes, but he could have forgiven your, from, your sins from heaven. He's God. Why did Jesus die on the cross? All those are true, but you're forgetting the big one. The penalty for sin is death. Amen. When you sin or I sin, we deserve to die. That's right. Now, the point is, when we sin, somebody had to die for those sins. Well, guess what? Jesus Christ offered to be that death. And then he conquered it by resurrecting, okay? Now, here's what people don't get. People don't get this. When we sin and we have to die, death is ultimately what Satan thought was his final word. So Satan's only two tools are sin and death. How do you overcome sin and death, which are Satan's only two tools? You want to conquer the devil? you got to overcome sin and death. 
How do we do it? The first ray behind me is the um, is the uh, pale ray right here. Yes. How do you overcome sin? The pale ray is, it shows it the cleansing waters of baptism and confession. So in the first ray, we have the antidote, the penicillin, the the vaccine for the first virus. <laughs> the very first virus is sin. Amen. And so we have the, the Christ gives us the antidote. And that is why we need the church. We need the sacraments because the antidote is the cleansing waters of baptism and confession. This is why the first thing Jesus said to do on Divine Mercy Sunday is to go to confession. Now, not it doesn't have to be on that day, but to get the grace, you have to first go to confession. It's tied to this part of the image, okay? Now, what is Satan's second great tool? Death. And what is death? How do you overcome death? Life. And what is life to the Jews? Blood. Blood. And so in this precious blood, we have the antidote to the second and most deadly virus, death. Amen. And so Christ gives us the antidote. Now, here's the key. What is Divine Mercy Sunday? It's an incredible promise of not only the forgiveness of all your sins, but all the temporal punishment and all the punishment you are owed to your sins. Now, what does Jesus say in paragraph 699 of the diary? To receive the grace of Divine Mercy Sunday, you first go to confession. That's the pale ray. Then you go to Holy Communion. That's the precious blood, the red ray. And basically, you receive, if you, if you are contrite and you're sorry for your sins, you receive the complete forgiveness of sin and all punishment due to sin. Now, what's so extraordinary about this promise is it's just Christ taking us back to the sacraments. And people don't understand. This is what the image is. Everything's given to us in the sacraments and people, Jesse, you and I spoke together. I love listening to this guy talk at conferences. <laughs> we, 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 hear, we, we hear people all the time, you know, say like, oh, you know, all faiths are the same. No, they're not. <laughs> what makes the Catholic faith unique is the sacraments. Only we have them. And in this image, you have the sacraments. Okay, so the, the two tools of Satan, uh, uh, sin is overcome by the cleansing waters of baptism and confession. Death is overcome by life, and life to the Jews was blood. Blood was the life of the animal. Now, how is all of this captured in the Paschal mystery? The Paschal mystery is from the beginning of Christ's passion till the end of his resurrection, including uh, all the way through the Easter season of Pentecost. Okay, the Holy Father said, that the best images of Christianity are those that best capture the Paschal mystery. Mm -hmm. Guys, there's no other image in the history of Christianity that captures the entire Paschal mystery like this image does. Wow. It, wow. Has, it has it all. Amen. Now, the Paschal mystery began in the upper room at Holy Thursday when Christ instituted the priesthood. So the first Part of this image that captures the Paschal mystery is Jesus dressed as the new high priest. He has the alb like a Christ, like a, a Catholic priest. And what do we see? The precious blood, which he instituted in the Eucharist. Okay. So number one, the upper room, um, Holy Thursday is in this image, the beginning of the Paschal mystery. What happened the next day? The crucifixion. In Christ's hands and in his feet, he bears the wounds of the cru crucifixion. So we see in his hands and in his feet the wounds of the crucifixion. Now, what happened three days later? On, on Easter Sunday, he resurrected. Christ in this image is resurrected. You can see the halo around his head. He is in his glorified state. So we know that Easter Sunday is captured in this image. He is glorified. Now, what happened 40 days after the resurrection? The ascension. How do we know the ascension is captured in this image? Because it says in scripture, before Christ ascended to the Father, he bestowed upon them a blessing. And the traditional form of Jewish blessing is the right hand raised at shoulder height 
and bestowing a blessing upon those present. When you come before this image, you are receiving Christ's blessing. And so this blessing that comes to us is captured in this image just like before the ascension. So the ascension is captured. What is 10 days after the ascension? The coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And guess what the Holy Spirit was? He was born. He gave birth to the church. You guessed it, <laughs> by blood and water. Amen. By blood and water. So Christ brought, excuse me, Christ's ascension allowed the ascension, his ascension allowed the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because remember, Jesus said, if I do not ascend to the Father, you will not receive the paraclete. So Christ's ascension enabled the Holy Spirit to descend upon Mary and the apostles to form the church at Pentecost. And the church was formed by blood and water. My goodness, this <laughs> image has everything. Amen. Father Chris. We're going to get to the bells on another segment on another day. We've got Bishop David O'Connell coming tomorrow to talk about uh, spirituality and the coronavirus and how to overcome that. But Father Chris, could you give all of our listeners a priestly blessing, please? Absolutely. And may all of the listeners that far and wide, mm -hmm. especially those that may be suffering and their family and loved ones in any way by the a coronavirus and the effects of this disease may almighty god hold you close console you and may our blessed mother mary wrap her mantle around you and may saint faustina intercede for you and heal you of any ills of the mind body or soul and through the priesthood may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirits amen, amen. Father Chris, you are a blessing. I want to have you stay for the next two minutes because you're going to get a smile on your face when I tell you what we do at the end of each show. Jess, let's talk about the five stones of, of David. Hit it. Five stones of David, 1 Samuel 17. All right, guys, girls. Step it up. Pray the Holy Rosary every single day. Remember St. Dominic Savio told, uh, Our Lady told St. Dominic Savio uh, that the rosary will crush and defeat heresies. We are living right now. Uh, in a time of modernism, we need to crush the heresy of modernism. We can't get to Mass, number two, stone number two, but you can do spiritual communion every day. And, and ask God for the grace. Say, Lord, give me the grace to make a good spiritual communion today. Number three, read the Bible every day. You can do that, okay? Even you even have it on your iPhone, the daily Mass readings. Say, Lord, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Read the daily Mass readings every day. Get yourself a good... Catholic devotion like the Magnificat or something like that. Number four, fasting. Remember, it's the time of Lent. Fasting. Remember, the Bible says that some demons can only be driven out by prayer and fasting. Mark 9, 29. Fasting and penance. And the, number five, if you're, a, if you're in a state of grace, praise the Lord. Stay that way by going to monthly confession. If you're in mortal sin, go to confession as soon as possible. But right after the show... Get on your knees and say, Lord, give me the grace to do a perfect contrition out of love for you, not out of, not out of fear of hell, because I love you, and do a heartfelt act of contrition. Terry? And don't forget, Our Lady of Fatima said, souls are going to hell because there's no one to pray and make sacrifices for them. Well, be that person. Make those sacrifices for your loved ones. Jesse, final statement. What state should we be living in, brother? Live in a state of grace. Don't live in a state of mortal sin. Don't even park your car. Don't cruise there by the weekend. Don't even drive by there. Get the hell out of that state. <laughs> the state of grace. Get the hell out of that state of mortal sin. Run to the arms of Jesus. Remember, tomorrow, Bishop David O'Connell will be with me in a special interview regarding how he can help families. He's going to give you some advice yep. on, on fighting for the faith in regards Terry, to the And Jesus tells St. Faustina, Faustina, fight like a knight so I can reward you. Amen. Fight like a knight. Amen. God love you. Full sheen ahead. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. Oh, my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. 
May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.